listening to Chick Flicks with me, your host, Alexis Otang. I'm the chick who rates shows and flicks and tells you whether they're worth a binge or a skip. I am so sorry for my voice. <laughs> okay, let me just get that out of the way. If you didn't know, my school is yes. We're in the final four for March Madness. I go to FAU, as you know, because you follow FAU Owl Radio and FAU Owl TV on Instagram. That's where my show is what's it called advertised yeah so as you know i go to that school really happy watch the game was screaming loud this past weekend for them so happy for them but yeah my voice is like this because of all the cheering i was doing so i'm very sorry but in between watching those games guys i actually got the um amazing chance to go and watch a um early preview or yeah early screening of Dungeons and Dragons, which comes out on Friday, March 31st. So I'm very thankful to Paramount. They did a little event, invited us, and I was so excited to go see the movie because as you guys usually know, I watch movies based on when they come out. I'm still new to this film game. I'm still trying to get my name out there. So I pay to go see these movies with my own money, and I usually have to wait till they come out in theaters. So I jumped at the chance to get to watch it early, especially because I'm putting this episode out before the movie comes out. Hopefully, fingers crossed that nothing happens and I got this review out before the movie comes out. And so I'm just going to go ahead and state that this is going to be a review that is spoiler free. I am not spoiling or I'm not purposely trying to spoil any part of the movie. But um, yeah, I'm really excited to be able to have seen the movie ahead of time so I could tell y'all all about it. Um, and this was actually on my March, uh, watch list. This was a movie I really wanted to see because I love Chris Pine. Um, and I do love fantasy adventure type of movies. So it intrigued me. The trailer looked good, promising. So when I heard I got to watch it for free, you know, I was there. It was an early screening and I woke up like 30 minutes before I had to be there. So I was like, nah, I'm not paying. I mean, I would pay 13 bucks to see it. Definitely. But why would I do that when I have the opportunity to see it free? So I hustled my butt out of my room and went to go see this movie. And now we're going to talk about what I liked, what I didn't like. Should y'all go see it? Listen and find out. So first of all, let's talk about this cast. We have a lot of well-known names in the industry. We have Chris Pine. And before I say his character's name, I knew nothing about Dungeons and Dragons prior to about a week ago. So I'm still trying to land these names, still trying to understand all aspects of the game. So don't come for me if I pronounce any of these names wrong or miss, like don't explain something properly. I am trying my best, okay? It's hard. Um, Chris Pine as Ed, Edgen Darvis. I low-key don't remember how they said his name. Michelle Rodriguez as Holga. Um, Rije Jean Page as Zank Yendar, Justice Jesse Smith as Simon, Sophia Lillis as Doric, Hugh Grant as Forge, Chloe Coleman as Darvis, and those are some of the biggest names. And obviously, we know Chris Pine from a multitude of movies. He was just in Don't Worry Darling uh, that came out last year. And then we have Michelle Rodriguez. We know her from the Fast and Furious franchise. Rije Jean Page, Bridgerton which is so sad that he's no longer a part of it. He would have been such a great, I would love to see how his character continues to evolve throughout the series, but we're not here to talk about that. But yeah, I, I was really excited for this film, especially when I saw the cast, but I was worried because I thought it would fall into, there's two things I was worried about. One, there is a curse on movies that are based off of games, video games and board games, okay? A lot of times writers and these studios have these um, video games, I'll just use those for examples, that already have a plot, characters, everything has been thought out to the end. It's a complete series. You literally just need to take that and translate it, which is a bit hard, I'm gonna give them credit. It's hard to take what is like nine hours of a video game, of story gameplay, and put it into a two hour and 30 minute movie. It's hard. You There's some things that are gonna have to be cut. But you already have everything like mapped out. You just have to pick the most important parts to keep and compress it a bit. Even with all of that handed to them, they still make very bad movies. They do bad casting choices. They just 
flopped. I think the last movie that was good, like this good, I'm going to do this, was Uncharted. Because I thought Uncharted as a film, if it wasn't connected to the Uncharted series, I thought it was good. But because it was trying to be the Uncharted game series, I thought it fell short in really capturing some of the essence of um, Nathaniel Drake, of the treasure hunting, of the, you know, being kind of like a con man, like a pirate in a way. There was some things that lacked. So I don't know. In Dungeons and Dragons, it technically doesn't have a main storyline. It's a game. It's a role playing game. You guys create the story. So they were basically only having the characters, classes, the things you could create, the creatures in the world to base it off. And they had to come up with their own unique storyline. So this was a hard task. And I don't know if I didn't know if they were going to be able to pull it off, especially because my second concern is with these fantasy action genre movies, they rely so much on the action and like that type of Marvel-esque comedy that's like they go for the obvious jokes and it just falls short every single time. I was worried that's what they were going to do. Rely too much on CGI and action and have those like eh, funny comedy moments, throw together a movie and think that was going to pass. And that's what I was worried. And did it fall to that? I don't think so. I think they did a great job. I think like after watching the film, I think they perfectly captured the essence of D&D. It was lighthearted. It was tense. There was action. But the comedy blended effortlessly with the action. And what I really liked what they did is d and is the type of game where you figure things out as you go. You are pivoting. You're, you're going on a campaign, right? Not everything is going to go your way. Sometimes the plan, the actions you guys want to do, they don't work out in your favor. You roll the dice, it doesn't go well. You have to either pivot, try to... Uh, do something new come up with a new plan nothing is ever like linear like it just goes like this you do this you go to that and this happens and then boom it's like you try to do this this doesn't work you have to go back here now you have to travel over there now you have to get this it's like this little game where you're always constantly moving it's never linear and they capture that in this movie like the characters it's not just they need to get this and then this is the plan it's we're gonna do this and then this didn't work out, so let's try this. Oh, but let's vis revisit here. Also, let's have these two plans go at the same time and hopefully something happens. I honestly didn't know what to, everything was unexpected. What was happening, even the comedic moments, like the first beginning scene, I really thought I knew what was gonna happen in that beginning scene. It was this bit of gag as they were waiting for somebody. He's like, I really need this guy to be here for this. I thought it was gonna go a totally different way. And the way it did was honestly surprising. And it was funny and it was um, surprising. And so, um, what's it called? I liked it because some things worked for the characters, their plans, and some things didn't. But that unpredict to unpredictability of D&D &D is evident throughout the plot. And like things never go the way you think and I loved that. Um, as far as the cast go, their chemistry was amazing. Um, their scenes as a group showcased how all of them are great at comedy. Um, and even though not a lot of them have been in, in works that are heavily like comedy based. Um, Chris Pines was just in Don't Worry Darling. Michelle Rodriguez, as I said before, we know her mostly from the Fast and Furious franchises, which every here and there there's jokes, but it's mostly like an action adventure type of movie. Um, Regé, Regé Jean Page, Bridgerton. Yeah, there's comedic moments, but it's more of like a romantic drama type of film, um, show. So I honestly didn't know, a lot of times with these films where they cast all these big names, it's a dumpster fire. Like they don't, all blend well but I think they found a great cast of characters who all blended well together and all the scenes when it was comedic it was very funny when it was serious it was very serious the they were able to shift tones very well and I enjoyed it I didn't find any part awkward or like a joke that kind of didn't land where I was like uh like yeah it's a little funny but it's like a dead giveaway um and so they all know how to uh, just like balance it and do it perfectly. And it made the film enjoyable. Uh, Chris Pine was the standout though, because he just knows how to, he knows how to be charming and funny effortlessly. Uh, one of my favorite movies that he's in is The Princess Diaries 2 Royal Engagement. 
Like, and I feel like there was a bit of that character, like the suaveness, the smooth talking, smooth talking to a degree, um, con man in a way. And he does a great job in this role. Uh, and that's really, I don't think it's surprising, but he it's a switch because like I said, the last role we saw him in was a dark, sinister boss, evil and don't worry, darling. And he now transitions to this main protagonist who's just trying to do his best to make things right. And his comedy, it doesn't feel forced. It doesn't feel stiff. It doesn't feel like a gag. He lands every joke perfectly. And like I said before, it's just effortlessly. It comes off naturally. It flows, and he just knows how to land those jokes. Um, Michelle Rodriguez as Holga, I think she did an amazing job. Um, we know her as a badass, like I said, in the Fast and Furious series. And we see that side of her. She plays a, a character who is very much able to stand on her hold. Great fighter, warrior, like bad bitch type beat. But she has a soft side that we get to see. You know, she takes on a role where she's looking after her. She has somebody very near and dear to her and kind of becomes like an older female figure for this girl. And I think they did, it's reminiscent of her character um, as Lenny in Fast and Furious, but more with a softer side, with more of a comedic side and with, I guess, different levels to it. And I really liked it. Um looking at my notes because I'm like, ooh, what else did I want to talk about? Mm. I, like I said, the plot, I think, is done very well. The look of the film, great. I'm not the best at, like, knowing what's good CGI, but I felt like they did a pretty good job. It's nowhere near Avatar. I don't know if any film in the next couple of years is going to come anywhere near to Avatar because the technology they were using on that thing, the techniques, the strategy, they were going for as realistic as humanly possible. I don't think D&D had that budget because as far as I'm concerned, Avatar 2 is the, one of the most expensive films ever made to date. Um, but I think they did a pretty good job with the budget they had. To me, I felt like immersed in the world. I felt like everything looked good. There was no eyesores for me. Um, I think the the scenes they could film with as realistic features as possible. They filmed and those things that they had to CGI in, they had to. I mean, we're dealing with a world where we have creatures like an owl bear. There are creatures who literally are animals that talk. The CGI is going to, there's going to be a lot of CGI done in a mystical fantasy world. But for what it's worth, I think it was done good. I think it looked really nice and there wasn't anything too off-putting for me at least. Um, and yeah, the plot, like I said before, captures what D&D is about. Um, and I really like how they, it wasn't just about some mighty main protagonist, a knight in shining armor who came, saved the day, slayed, did all these things with his little side. Every character had an important job and they were all needed in some type of way. It didn't just feel like Chris Pine's character was the one like doing all of the grunt work in a way they kind of poke fun at how like most of them are carrying the heavy weight. He's just the guy who convinces them to do these crazy plans and it, it works. Like it's more of an ensemble piece and I like it. It's a band of misfits and their journey and they each have to make sacrifices. They each have to challenge themselves, make some change, improve their skills or just even believe in the cause and that they can do it for it to be successful. And I think that kind of like parallels how in when you're playing D&D, &D, like every single person in your team is just as important as the other. They all have a, a vital role. There's not just one person who can carry the team because at some point you're gonna meet an obstacle that completely makes them useless and you gotta rely on your other teammates. And that is something that's shown in this film is like nobody here is kind of like yeah there's a leader but the leader is just there to kind of tell them let's try this and then everybody pitches in to make it work and in the end it takes all of them coming together for them to even get close to achieving their goal but yeah as it for the like as the pacing if everything made sense pacing was well i thought the pacing was great i think the plot flowed amazing i don't know a lot about D, &D i'll tell you this right now I literally, like I said, I learned it. We They did an event at my school that I filmed um, for my job. And they kind of were doing like um, explaining the game for those who were like beginners to it. 
kind of grasped it quickly nothing too hard i didn't stay for the full event i just got the footage i needed and dipped but um with that little knowledge i got i still understood the whole thing and i feel like even if you didn't i didn't get a lot of knowledge i got mostly like how to build a character like a bit of the world things like that going into this movie if you have no knowledge of D, &D you'll be fine i you don't really need to if you do though love D, D, I think you will enjoy it as well because um, one of my coworkers went with me. He likes D, D. He plays a lot. He told me that it was pretty accurate. So don't come for me if you're like, it wasn't accurate, Alexis. Okay, well, he said it was. I don't know about D, &D so I could tell you is with no prior knowledge, really, I enjoyed it. It made sense to me. Um, but I think if you do like D, &D I think you will like this film. Um, I think you will see, they have a lot of Easter eggs apparently for those. I watched some behind the scenes. There's a lot of Easter eggs for those of y'all who do enjoy D&D, &D, who do enjoy um, playing this game, know a lot about the characters. You have the guides, you have the manuals, you know every single creature. You're going to have a fun time with this film. You're going to see a lot of the Easter eggs. You're going to understand. Um, and yeah, and just, and like some people were like, well, if you like understand Stranger Things, you'll be fine they did anything in stranger things i didn't see any references to that in this so it's like two separate things so if you're thinking well i have like stranger things knowledge is that gonna help me i watch stranger things i don't see any correlations between the characters they're talking about in stranger things and the characters we were dealing with the creatures we're dealing it with in this one so yeah if that's all the prior knowledge you have you're basically going into this with no prior knowledge so you know but you'll still understand the film You'll like it. Like, at no point was I sitting there being like, what is going on? Like, what is that? How does this work? They they explain it in a way that it doesn't even feel like it's expository, that, like, they're sitting there and explaining things, which I hate when films have to literally spell things out for us. It's like, if you can't tell it through the actions, tell it through the plot effortlessly, if you have to sit there and have narration, now I might want to have to go back to the drawing board. It shouldn't feel like I'm watching a how-to guide or manual should feel like I'm watching a story. Um, but yeah, overall, is this film Chick Flicks approved? I say yeah, I definitely say. If you are if you are thinking about going to see Dungeons and Dragons, you love a good fantasy adventure film, you love, you know, comedy, you like Chris Pine, you'll definitely enjoy this movie. If you love D&D, you definitely should go see this. Uh, like I said, this was something on my watch list that I really wanted to go see. And I honestly, it was a great, it was a good time. It was fun. At no point did I feel bored or did I feel like, okay, how much longer is there left in this movie? How much longer till I get to go? I, uh, I at no point in the movie wanted to fall asleep, wanted to, um, I couldn't even be on my phone because it was a um, an early screening and they're like, uh, no phones allowed. If we see you on your phone, we will ask you to leave. At no point did I even think of reaching for my phone. Because that's how I know I'm kind of getting tired of the movie. No offense to Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumanium. But I took a, a look at my phone a couple of times during it. No shade. But, yeah. I think you guys would like this film. So it's definitely Chick Flicks approved. You gotta go see it. Finish, final movie of March to finish out. I think a great month of movies we had a lot of bangers we had some movies that did exceptionally well some movies that were mid-tier and then i don't really think there was anything that was too bad i know i just flamed ant-man and the wasp but it wasn't that bad it was pretty good it was like mid-tier marvel um but yeah guys that's it let me do my long as outro if you'd like to stay connected with me and my socials you can follow my public profile at Alexis Otang on Instagram. You can follow my TikTok at Simply Alexis for my Chick Flicks account for my podcast. If you'd like to follow us on Instagram or TikTok, it is at the Chick Flicks Show. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're watching on here at Simply Alexis. And if you're watching on any of the um, accounts who I am official show of, whether that is our radio's platform or Owl TVs, make sure you follow them at FAU Owl Radio on Instagram and FAU Owl TV. And yeah, guys, that's it. Thank you so much for the love and support. And um, I look out for next week because I am going to be doing my movies to watch for April. Uh, there's a lot of bangers coming out. We're literally getting treated because we're getting back to back really good months of movies. You already know the Super Mario Bros. movie is on my list. I do not care if it's childish of me to go and sit and watch the Super Mario Bros. I want to see Peach 
be a bad bitch. I want to see them racing on Rainbow Road. I want to see Toad. He's just so cute. And also them making Bowser Jack Black. Chef's kiss. They know they're cooking. I have a good feeling about that film. I have a good feeling. But yeah, guys, that's it. This is Alexis signing off with Chick Flicks. You guys have a good one. See you later.